Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 3.0, Day 6. So this is our second day talking about contacts, and this is our second uh, applet or sub-menu icon here, contacts. So today we're going to talk about uh, custom tags, we're going to talk about filters, and we're going to talk about smart views. So as you grow your database, obviously you're going to get more and more people in the database, and Honestly, it can get a little overwhelming if you're not doing things like adding custom tags so that later you can filter that database and see specific groups or classifications of people that you want to work with. So in order to add a custom tag, the first thing we need to do is go into our settings and we're going to go over to command settings and then we're going to choose contacts and custom tags. So you have the ability here, these have been loaded kind of slow this morning, so they may or may not pop up, but you do have the ability to go through here and click on this create new tag button. So here you can get an example of some of the tags that I have. I have about 68 of those. Um, ignore this, I'm not sure why it's saying I have 912,000 contacts uh, with that tag, obviously I don't. And yet, um, if you want to create a tag, think about groups of people that you want to start classifying. So. Um, they could be tagged based upon, right, and here I've got people that I met at Megacamp or that they are an associate or an allied resource. They're a KW Platinum agent. I have people that are in my coaching program, uh, past clients from 2018. The sky's the limit. I have tags in here based upon where people are, so whether they're in Katy or Cyprus. Um, I also teach across the country, so anytime I teach, I get a lot of agents' contact information and business cards. I put those people in my database to follow up with later. I'll tag those by things like Tulsa, Oklahoma, or San Antonio, Texas, or um, Alabaster, Alabama, places like that that I've been recently that I've been teaching. So all these are just some opportunities that you can come in and put in. So to add an actual custom tag, once you say, yep, I want to group this person by this tag, all you have to do is create new tag. And then you're going to name the tag. So let's just put in test tag. And I can choose a color for that tag as well. So let's say I want it to be kind of a standout, a little darker there. Once I click on create, that is now a tag that I have the ability to utilize with my contacts moving forward. So let's go back into contacts and we'll just pull up one of our test contacts here. So let's grab double A seller and I'll show you how you add that custom tag. So once you have the contact record open, essentially you're just gonna click on the pencil here to edit the tag, or edit the contact, excuse me, and then you can see tags down here. I can click in this box, and it'll give me a list of all of the tags that I have created. And sometimes you have to scroll down to find which one you wanna use, right? So I can get to, we called it test tag. I could do that by just scrolling down, and here you see test tag. I'm not sure why that color didn't take, but that's okay. I'm just gonna click on test tag. Um, I also have the ability to actually type in this box. So if I start typing in test, you'll see it's gonna pop up that test tag there. Also from the contact record, I have the ability to create a custom tag instead of having to go through the settings menu. And if I actually had a contact record up and I wanted to create a tag for someone, I could create it right here from the actual contact record. Uh, one thing I will say, just be careful about your custom tags. You don't wanna have, um, let's say, um, I might have a tag for a lender and then I might have a tag for a mortgage person or mortgage expert or whatever. Um, if I later, and I'll show you how to filter here in a second, if I later were to filter for all of my uh, lenders, I would miss anyone I had tagged as mortgage expert. And if I'm filtering for mortgage experts, I might miss everyone that I had put in as a lender. Um, so, you know, I've, I've had people create tags for like potential lead, potential buyer, and then future buyer, and then possible buyer, and all of a sudden, right, they're trying to filter their contacts and they're missing people because they tagged them multiple different ways. So my, I think the best practice is if you're going to create a tag, look through the ones that you already have and make sure you don't have a tag that's already very similar to that. And if you do have one that's similar, then use the same tag, be consistent throughout your entire process, all right? So once we're back in the full contact list, the importance of using tags becomes apparent when we start looking at filters, and I'm gonna show you some additional filters as well. Once I click on filters, 
the filter screen pops up here from the left hand side and I have a variety of different methods I can filter my database by. The first ones here at the top, based upon the stage, whether you've captured their information, whether you've connected with them or whether you've actually qualified them. And obviously you can do that within the contact record. System tag. So let me say I want to look at all of the system tags that are available here, right? So you can see these are created by KW already stock in your system. So if I wanted to look at everybody in my database, let's just say that was a KW agent. I could do that and I could come down and click on apply. And all of a sudden my database goes from 2786 to 529. So I have 529 KW agents in my database. You can see that this filter is active. So I'm only going to see the ones with this filter. I can click on the X and it removes the filter and takes me back to my entire list of contacts as well. So I can click on filters again. On the right hand side, you can see here we have our custom tags. So I can go through and let's say I wanted to find somebody that lived, maybe I have a new listing going live in Katy and I want to pull everybody up from my database that I've tagged in Katy. So I could click on that and then I could click on down here at the bottom, apply, and it's going to pull up the people that I have tagged in Katy right now. All right, so I can cancel that filter and let's go back. Let's get rid of that custom tag. I could go through and look at company. Maybe I have um, a lot of people from a particular company that I want to send out an invite for uh, an event that I'm doing nearby where they work. That could be something we'd use company for. Um, created, so longer than. So I want to know someone that's in my database that's been in my database for more than, you know, three months, six months, 12 months. I could also do, I want to find people that have been created within my database within the last blank. So this is important too, if you're running Facebook ads, you wanna see the contacts that have come in within the last one or two days. I could do that within last one day and click on apply. It would only show me the people that have been put into my database within the last day. So these are all people that I've put into my database within the last day. I can go back to filters and cancel that out. Okay, you also have lead source. So I can come through here and filter by lead source. I can filter by modified within the last. So did I make any changes? Have I up and dated anything? Have I made any, right? So <clears throat> if I longer than, so modified longer than let's say 10 days, that's basically going to then show me anyone that has had a modification or hasn't been modified, right? That's why it's such a big list, 2485 there. Um, I also have the ability to do last contacted, last visited, date of birth, right? So I wanted to see who's who's got birthdays within the next three days. So I can plan to make some calls. We have the birthday smart plan and I highly recommend that. And yet if you have people in your database, I could just say, hey, um, I think Austin's birthday is today. And then Jennifer and Nancy and my boy Philip and my boy Rich from KW Platinum, right? All have birthdays coming up within the next three days. So that's another example of a filter that you could create. Uh, primary phone. You've got primary email. Does the contact have a neighborhood assigned to them or not? So that's always a good one. Uh, who's the ownership, right? So if you're on a team, we're working on some of those permissions still coming down the pipe. And then you have ownership type as well. So let's say I wanted to create a smart view and say I'm really working on upping my database score by adding addresses and assigning neighborhoods. I could come in here and say, okay, I wanna look at all of my contacts that do not have a neighborhood. Okay, but I want to use this view frequently. Maybe this is something that I time block for the first 30 minutes of any of my lead generation time or the last 30 minutes of my lead gen time. I'm gonna go in and work on addresses and neighborhoods. So I wanna see this filtered view often. We call that a smart view. It's a view that you wanna filter your contacts by and then be able to pull back up. Um, actually, you can see your smart views if you come over here, this is the original smart view, the kind of the OG smart view, if you will. It's all of your contacts. If you click down here, you can see, okay, here is a smart view that I set up that is just my sphere. Here's a smart view that I set up personally for incoming leads. So if I click on that, you'll see what the filter is. The filter is actually people that have been created within the last two days, contacts or, or database entries created within the last two days. So, and then the last one here, you can see that there are several that Kelly has actually already put in. 
So we were doing the neighborhood ones. It shows contacts that do not have any neighborhoods associated. That was the exact smart view that we were looking at creating and Kelly's actually already created for us. So maybe I want to create a filter for, um, again, we talked about the birthday smart plan. So I could say, hey, um, I want to do a birthday within the next, I don't know, five days, okay? So if I didn't want to put all of my database on the smart plan, I could just say, all right, here's all the people in my database that have a birthday within the next five days. That way I can make sure that I give them a call or make a social post or uh, actually send them a birth birthday card, etc. So these are all the abilities that you have for filtering the lead. And then once you get that, so let's do this. Uh, I still haven't actually saved a smart view. Let me say, I want a smart view. I take listings often in Katy, Texas. So I want Katy, Texas and I want buyers. Okay, so I want all of my buyers that are in Katy, Texas, and I don't know that this is gonna filter anyone because I don't think that I have anyone applied to this, but if I clicked on apply, it would show any of the buyers that I have put in my database that were also in Katy, Texas. So it's gonna take a little time to load, but if that was the actual filter that I wanted to save, I would just come down here to the bottom and click on save smart view. It's gonna say, what do you want that smart view to be called? And I could just say, I want it to be called Katy Buyers. Okay, so I would click on Save Smart View, and there you would see that it's basically gonna come up with people that have system tag of buyer and that are also in Katy, Texas. So got 18 people in that setup right now. And actually it looks like now that I'm looking at it, and this may be a glitch, we'll run it up the chain and see, but it appears that this is either someone that has buyer or has Katy but not necessarily both. So I think that is something that we're working on. So it doesn't look like I can do both a system tag and a custom tag. So let's just say I want everybody in my database that has Katy, Texas, and I'll save that as a smart view. So I'll click on save smart view. That will be Katy farm, maybe we'll call it that one. All right, and let's say that Katy buyer smart view we didn't like, we could click on this drop down box here. To see all of our smart views, we can click on manage smart views. And that KD buyer one, that one didn't work. So let's come down here. We're gonna click on the KD buyer. And actually let's click on all the, there we go. Now I can see the trash can. I'm gonna get rid of that smart view. It says delete smart view and I say yes. And now that smart view is no longer in my list of actual smart views. So I click on apply. And now you have the ability basically to go back into Smart Views. If I wanted to see all my people from Katie, I now have a new Smart View called Katie Farm. All right, so that's basically how we create a custom tag, how we can utilize custom tags and or system tags when we are creating a contact or editing a contact. And then also the ability to use one of these multiple filters to kind of take our massive database and shrink it down to a more manageable, workable size. And then you've also seen a smart view for a filter that you really like and you want to continue to use. That's it for today, guys. I hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. And as always, I'll look forward to speaking with you in the morning. Thanks so much.